I want to show you something very powerful. In a previous video, I made this program right here. I'm going to run it and then I'll tell you what it is. So let's just run. This is in Python. I'm going to give you a link to this down below. I also linked um, the playlist for this whole thing is, is down below too. So if you want to watch that. So this shows a hockey puck moving in the XY direction. And this is a plot of the uh, X position and the Y position. And we did a numerical calculation of how this thing moves. And that's all great and fine. And I don't want to change that. Uh, so it started at position R1, it moved to position R2 in time T1, T2, and then we use that to find the average velocity, and then we use that to find out where it would be in the future. So it kept just moving the puck, uh, and this is the position update formula. It's moving at a constant velocity, so we don't have to change momentum, and that's fine. What I want to do is to show you something very powerful with this simple calculation, and that's how to make three-dimensional representations of this. We can graph the motion of the puck, which I did, but let's make the puck. It's going to be great. And then I'm going to show you a couple things. Okay, so I'm going to start off this with this the easiest way. So there's three-dimensional graphics built into this. It's pretty easy to do. So up here, okay, so I have R1, R2, and all this stuff. Um, I'm going to put, I'm going to change this, um, I'm trying to think best way to start this. Um, so I, if you remember, I had R as my initial position, and then I just updated that. I'm going to change that. I'm going to change. I'm not going to use R. Instead, I'm going to make a puck. I'm going to say puck, and I'm going to make it a sphere, okay, which seems silly, but we'll change it later. So it's, it's a sphere. And that's all I'm going to do. Puck equals sphere. Sphere is a built-in object in GlowScript v Python. I'm going to run the program. So all I do is say puck equals sphere. Click run. And there you'll see I still have the graph down here. But I also have this sphere. And I can zoom in and zoom out. I can rotate it around. It's a three-dimensional sphere. So that's kind of cool. Let's go back over here. Now I can give it some properties. I can give it a location. I can give it a size. I can give it a color. I'm going to do that right now. So I'm going to give it a position by saying POS equals vector 530. It's the same as this vector place right here. So that's the location of it. Now I want to give it a size. This is completely arbitrary. If I'm thinking it's like a hockey puck, um, I don't know, I'm, in my mind, I'm thinking like a five centimeter diameter. I'm just going to do five centimeters. So I'm going to say radius equals 0 0.05. That's five centimeters. And now let's give it a color just because color equals color dot yellow. Yellow shows up really well. Now I'm going to run it again. So there's my hockey puck way over there. So what it did was it said, okay, I, I still want to show the origin, but I'm going to put the puck where it is. So it's really small, and you can see I can rotate that around. Let's see if I rotate that around. It's hard to zoom in because of the where, where it is, but it is there. There's my hockey puck. Okay, so now let me show you something else. Instead of using R for my value, my variable, I'm going to use the position of the puck. So let's do this. I'm going to say print R equals r meters and then i'm going to say print and then, now remember the vector r and r are in the same location print uh puck pos equals puck it's an object now and so i can use attributes of that object like pos the position dot pos and i'll give that in meters so let's run this so it's got my puck up there it's got my graph and then down here it says r equals that, puck equals that. So uh, puck.pos is what I'm going to use instead of r. If I change puck.pos, it will move the sphere. It's going to be great. OK, so back up here to the code. I don't need that print statement. I'm going to get rid of that. This dr, this, this v stuff, that's fine. But right here, I'm actually going to do something different. Um, I still calculated the velocity, but right here, I'm actually going to associate the velocity with the puck. And, and to, to do that, the reason to do that is if I have more than one object, it's easier to identify which velocity goes with. You don't have to do this. You could just leave it as v. But I'm going to say puck.v, because puck is an object. Now I'm going to say v is a property of that object. 
And so then I can refer to it as puck.v. Later, if I have another puck, I can say puck2.v or whatever. Okay, the time is the same, dt is the same. Now this right here, um, I have, I wanna change this. So let's just comment that out because I wanna leave it there for reference. So instead of r, I'm gonna say puck.pos. Puck.pos equals. And instead of the other r, puck.pos. So just like before, I can update the value of r and, and make things happen. I'm gonna update the value of puck.pos. And it's gonna be plus puck.v times dt. Now everything would work except for these plots down here because now it wants to plot r and there is no r. I deleted it. Uh, let's just, I could change this to uh, puck.pos.x and puck.pos.y. That's fine. Okay, but I, I actually don't want to, that's fine. Let's run it. I guess I should save, I did save it. I, I named it, I didn't save it though. Okay, so now it's saved. Now let's run it. And what happened? Okay, that's, I know what happened. So it did what I wanted to. Actually, the, the puck is down here. It's hard to see. Let's make the puck bigger. Let's make the puck um, 0.1. Let's see if that's big enough to see. Let's make it a little bit bigger. 0.3. Okay, there it is. Now remember, it started up here and now it's down there. Okay, so th it, it moved. But, but we didn't see it move because this program did not take very long to run. It's not a hard program. So the computers did as fast as it could. We can change that by adding a statement. So first thing I'm gonna do is, let's do it this way. I'm gonna say rate 10. This tells GlowScript v Python to not do any more than 10 calculations per second. Since I have a time step of one tenth of a second, this will take 10, three seconds to run this loop up to three seconds. So now we should be able to see it move. Let's see if we can actually see that move. I'm gonna run it. And you'll notice that the, the puck seems to get a little bit smaller. Uh, that's because the camera zooms out. The camera is gonna try to fit everything in at the same time, but you can see it jumping down because it's moving every one tenth of a second. We can actually see that. We can fix that um, by going up here to DT as 0 0.01 and then putting a time rate of 100. So now I'm gonna do a calculation every one hundredth of a second and I'm gonna do 100 loops per second. So if I run that, that looks nice. So we've made our first three-dimensional animated motion. It is in 3D. You can rotate it around. That's pretty nice. Um, so if I go back up here, I do want to add one more thing. Uh, one of the things I think is very useful is to have the, the ball leave a trail behind. So if I put an add an attribute, uh, make underscore trail equals true, and then run this, you can see that's where it started and it's leaving a trail. Okay, let's add some other things just to practice. Number one, what if I wanted to make this a puck, not a sphere? So if you go over here, um, let's go to glowscript.org and then go to help and then go to choose a 3D object and let's choose uh, a cylinder. That's a puck, right? So this tells you everything you need to know about a cylinder. Uh, the most important thing are in this picture right here. So a cylinder has a position, which is the location of one end, and then an axis is a vector from that end to the other end. It also has a radius and a color and all that stuff. So let's change our code so that we have a puck a, is a cylinder. So I'm gonna say cylinder. Now in vPython, this well, I'd be this way for you. This is the X direction, this is the Y direction, and this is the Z direction. So um, I want the puck to be in the same position, that's fine, and the radius is fine, but I need to define an axis. If you don't do that, it's just gonna pick something for you. So I want the, the axis of the puck coming out of the page, which is in the Z direction. So let's just add in here, axis equals vector, zero, zero. Now, how far do I want it to be? That tells me the thickness. So let's say 0 0.02. 
I'm just picking. And let's see what that looks like. And so there, I got a puck. And actually, I got the I got it backwards, right? I think, no, it's fine. It left a trail. It's kind of thin. Let's make it a little bit thicker. Um, one, let's try that. There, that's pretty nice. There's my puck. Okay, let's do a couple of other things. And these are just mostly for, mostly, but not fully, mostly for fun. Because um, it's, it's sometimes making a visual representation can give us an idea about what's actually going on. And that's pretty nice. I'm gonna put a dot for the origin. So let's make the origin, um, let's call it uh, origin, I think it's not reserved, and it's a sphere, and its position is the origin, zero, 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 just so we can see where it is. And um, it's, I need, it needs a size, radius, let's say point, make it smaller, point zero five. And let's just, it's, it's not gonna move, it's just gonna be a point. Let's just see if we can see what that does. So there's my origin right there, you see it, and then it's moving with respect to that and zooming out a little bit, that's fine. Um, I want to mark the locations of these two initial positions. So let's make these, let's just make these spheres. Uh, sphere, vector, and let's give it a radius of uh, 0 0.005, the same as before. And then this one also is a sphere. Those are the two points that we used to find the average velocity. Oh, I gotta say position equals, POS equals, POS equals, radius equals 0 0.05. Okay, now let's run that. So there's one of them, and I think this is the other one right there, so you can't really see it. And there's an origin, uh, these all need to be bigger. Point, let's all make them point 0.1, point 0.1, 0.1 and the origin too, because it's just too small. Too small. Okay, there. there. There's my origin, there's my one point, the other point's right there. Um, now I want to, to represent the vector positions of that just for fun. So I can actually draw an arrow in Python. I'm gonna make these uh, cyan colored, so I'm gonna make two arrows. Uh, I should have called them R1 and R2, but that's fine. Uh, Okay, let's do that. Let's call this P1 for point one and P2. Now I'm gonna make R1 is another object called an arrow. So arrow, it also has a position and the position is gonna be where it starts. That's gonna be the vector zero, zero, zero. And it's going to have an axis, uh, which is gonna be from where it starts to where it ends. And since it starts at the origin, I could just say the axis is P1. And then I'm gonna give it a color, color equals color dot cyan. And then let's do the same thing for R2. R2 is an arrow position equals vector zero, zero, zero. Axis, the, technically you should do axis is P1 minus the origin, but the origin's at zero, so that's fine, is P2, color equals color dot cyan. And something happened. Axis must be a vector. Oh, I know, okay. So I said axis is P1. It's the vector position of P1. So I need to say P1.POS. I need to say P2.POS. And there's my two vectors. Now, they're really thick because uh, it, it automatically scales the thickness of an arrow with respect to its length. And we can fix that if you want to. I don't really care to right now at this point. I'm pretty happy with that. That shows those two vector starting locations. Let's do something else. Let's make a vector. One more thing, the vector to represent the velocity of the puck and put it on there so we can represent that. Okay, so I'm gonna go down here uh, I know the puck velocity right there. I'm gonna say V arrow, that's the velocity arrow, is arrow. Um, the position is gonna be, I want it to be on the puck. So puck.pos. And then the axis, I want it to be puck.v. And then the color, let's make it red. Color equals color.red. Uh, so let's just run that. It's not gonna work, because I know there's some problems. Um, Something happened. R2. I'm making dumb mistakes here, aren't I? R2. 
R2. Oh, I, I got rid of the R's. So this would be P2.POS, P1.POS. Hopefully that fixes it. Okay. So there it moved. It's moving right there. There's my giant velocity arrow. Two things. It, the arrow didn't move and it's too big. So we are drawing this arrow in meters, but I had the length in as a velocity. So I need to find some scale ratio for that. So if I ever want to make an arrow for something that's not a distance, I do I probably need to add a scale. So down here, I'm going to make a thing called V scale. And it's going to be the scale multiplication of that. I'm going to pick. Let's just pick 0.1. I'm just going to pick it. I don't know. And then for the axis down here, I'm going to say V scale times that. So let's see what that looks like if I make it a tenth as big. It's actually too small. So let's make it um, 0.3 V scale. Now I'm going to run that again. Okay, that's a pretty good size, but it's not moving. Okay, so down here in my code, when I move the puck, which is right here, I also need to move the arrow. So I'm going to say uh, v arrow dot pos equals puck dot pos. I want it to be on the puck, but the puck moves, so I need to redefine that. Now you may need to redefine this the axis of the arrow too. In this case, it doesn't change. I'm going to do it anyway. V arrow dot axis equals v scale times puck dot v. So if the velocity changed, then the, the direction and magnitude of the arrow would also change. But now we have a nice program here. Look at that. Okay, I'm blocking with my face. Okay, so that's a just, we've seen the, the sphere, uh, we've seen the arrow, we've seen the cylinder, um, and now we can make animations in 3D. It, it does become quite useful for other things. Uh, and I'll show you some more stuff later, but there you go.